We've already established that expressions understand values. So if I add an expression to the rotation property, go to animation, add expression, I could just replace the default expression with a number. So if I type in 100, that's what that value will be. Expressions also understand math. So if I type in 100 plus 50, it will understand that value 150. But expressions can also understand words. For example, if I animate the hours hand, say from 0 to 12, so that's giving it 12 revolutions, then I can link this expression to that value using what's called the pick whip. When I do that, it writes an expression for me. It's referring to this comp, layer hours outlines, transform rotation. So some of the words that you get in expressions are really easy to understand. Part of the expression language is about After Effects. It refers to things like the comp, the layer, the transform property group, rotation value. This is almost like an address for this value to get its property from, which is over here. And now you'll see that both of those animate at exactly the same time. And of course, I can use a combination of words and math. So if I divide that result by two, then that one goes at half the speed of the other one. OK, so you're combining words with math. Now, there are other words that you can use in expressions. And if we have a look in this menu here, this is the expression language menu. You can see some of those words in here. Now, this can be a bit overwhelming, this menu. But if you have a look in something like the property menu, you can see it refers to things like value and velocity, which we recognize as well from the graph editor in After Effects, or speed. So some of the words will be familiar. You'll see that wiggles in there. And the wiggle expression is very similar to using the wiggler panel. And we can have a look at that a little bit later. There are also some terms that you'll recognize like loop in, loop out, and again, we'll have a look at those. Now, if we go up and have a look at things like the lights and the cameras, you'll see some of the properties that you're familiar with, with lights and cameras. But then some of the language in here is kind of based more on JavaScript. And you'll see here we have JavaScript math menu, which has things like cosine and sine values, which we'll have a look at later. So some of the language refers to After Effects. Some of it refers to standard JavaScript math functions. There's other math in here. We've got degrees to radians and color conversion. Again, we'll have a look at these later. And then we have the interpolation language, where we have things like the linear expression, which will allow you to convert ranges. It's also things like the global section, which has refers to things like comps, footage, this comp, time we refer to as well, color depth. And if we go into the comp menu, we can refer to things like things inside the comp, like the layers or the width, height, duration of the comp. So you can refer to all of these language elements within your expressions. So let's have a look at how something like that would be put together, something that refers to the comp and also the comp width or height. So if we have a look at this composition, 03 shapes, and double click that, you'll see there's an expression in here that uses those elements in what we call an array to determine the x value and the y value. We say this comp width divided by two, this comp height divided by two. And that's giving it a position that's half the comp width and half the comp height. Now, the great thing about this is if I go up here and change my composition settings, to a different sized comp, it still maintains that position in the center of the comp. Now, it would do that anyway if my layer was in the middle of a comp. But imagine if I say this comp width divided by 3, and we'll do that here as well. So divided by 3 moves it up to this corner. And now you'll see I can go to different comp sizes, and it's going to maintain a position which is a third of the comp height and a third of the comp width in terms of x and y value. So that's a little bit about the different types of words that you'll find in expressions. Don't worry too much about understanding the whole expression language menu to begin with. All you need to understand is that words can be used in combination with values, numbers and other symbols to create expressions. We'll have a look at some of those symbols in the next tutorial.